In downtown Cleveland, you'll find Progressive Field, the home of the team with the least progressive name in baseball. Thankfully, they've recently changed their logo and are soon to change their name. Now before the city became the butt of the joke, Cleveland actually had a large and varied tapestry of baseball history. Cleveland Spiders, and later the unfortunately named Indians, featured such legends as Cy Young, Nap LaJoy, Tris Speaker, and Jim Tomei, among others. Cleveland's biggest claim to baseball fame, though, isn't in its major league teams. It's that it was once the hotbed of amateur baseball in the US. Cleveland was once a booming industrial town, and by the turn of the century, had a plethora of workers playing for their factory's teams. Those teams would play against teams from other factories, or churches, or other community groups. Soon, the demand for diamonds was so large that the Cleveland Amateur Baseball Association was formed. This gave structure and divisions to the existing teams, allowing the baseball community to grow into something massive. Amateur baseball was such a huge draw in Cleveland that crowds of over 100,000 people reportedly showed up for some of the bigger championship games in venues like League Park or Brookside Park. Some of this interest could have been due to the struggles of Cleveland's major league teams at the time. However, even while those teams were struggling, Municipal Stadium was setting MLB attendance records. It seems like the demand for baseball in Cleveland really was that big. As the 20th century went on, it became harder and harder for people who weren't making a decent living to go see a game, a problem that continues to get worse today. So the usually free amateur games were an easy sell. Combine that with the sense of community of watching local players succeed, and you have all the conditions for amateur baseball to be as immensely popular as it was. The amateur baseball boom would continue in Cleveland all the way through the end of the Second World War, earning it the title, the Sandlot Capital of the World. After the war though, as factories started shutting down and people moved out to the suburbs, the number of amateur teams in Cleveland declined at the same time the city did. League Park still stands today. Not the entire structure, but there is still a usable public baseball field and a section of the original building that has been turned into a museum documenting the history of baseball in Cleveland. Baseball is so much more than just the MLB, and events and movements like this need to be remembered. While its population has declined, one thing that has not is Cleveland's love of Polish food. The famous local dish is the Polish Boy, which takes a traditional kielbasa sausage and serves it on a bun with coleslaw, fries, and barbecue sauce. It's a delicious mess that is the perfect option to spill all over your scorecard. To make our own, we'll start by making the sauce. You can always use your favorite store-bought barbecue sauce, but making your own actually isn't that hard. Start by dicing up a small to medium onion and four cloves of garlic. Add those to a pot with a bit of salt and cook them down low and slow for about 10 minutes. Add in one tablespoon paprika, one teaspoon cayenne pepper, and one tablespoon black pepper and saute those with your aromatics. Next, add two cups of ketchup, half a cup of brown sugar, one quarter cup apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons Worcestershire sauce, and two tablespoons soy sauce. Let that simmer on low for 40 minutes, stirring every once in a while to make sure it doesn't burn. Once the sauce is done simmering and is thickened up, let it cool and transfer to a blender and puree it until smooth. Next, we'll start prepping our fries. Grab four thoroughly washed medium russet potatoes with the skin on. Set a large pot of water to boil and add in a decent amount of salt and one tablespoon of vinegar. Cut the potatoes into fry-like shapes and boil them for eight minutes. Drain the water from the fries and let the excess moisture steam off of them. Add the fries to a large baking sheet and thoroughly cover them with oil. Bake them in the oven at 425 for 15 minutes, then flip them and bake them for another 10 minutes until nice and crispy. Empty the tray into a paper towel lined bowl and toss the fries with salt. 
For the coleslaw, since I'm not a fan of traditional mayo-based coleslaw, I went with something a little more interesting. This is based on the Polish Boy recipe from famous Cleveland chef Michael Simon. Start by thinly slicing or shredding half a head of cabbage, which as I found out ended up being a bit too much. So instead, slice up the amount of cabbage for the amount of coleslaw you want. Sprinkle your cabbage with a few pinches of salt and massage that salt into the cabbage. This will take some of the excess moisture out of the cabbage. Now let that sit for half an hour before draining the juices. Peel and julienne two carrots. Thinly slice one quarter of a red onion and combine those in a mixing bowl with the cabbage. Add in three tablespoons of vinegar, three tablespoons of mustard, two tablespoons of mayo, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of sugar, and one tablespoon of black pepper. Thoroughly toss that like your Trevor Bauer warming up in the outfield. Now for the main event, the kielbasa sausage. Polish boys are usually grilled, but if you don't have that option like I do, I recommend putting it in the oven. Set your oven to 375 and bake that for 20 minutes, flipping frequently. If you run into the same issue that I did, where your sausage is a bit too big for the bun, just cut it down to fit. Cover up your bun in coleslaw and fries, put the sausage on top, and slather it up with barbecue sauce. Pick up that hot mess and enjoy the game.